Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the Righteous Fire Inquisitor 3.16 League update. Uh, I'm currently level 90 and I wanted to make this video to specifically address what I have changed slash augmented from the original templates before the league started. For the most part, you don't have to worry. There's not really any regret changes. The tree is identical. I think the only change I've done with the tree is like specking here and grabbing this for AoE. And that's quite literally about it. There will be a cluster jewel set up later, but I'm not going into that right now because I don't have the currency for it. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a quick tier 11 map. Quick tempo. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and explain pretty much what I have changed with my gear because there has been some itemization changes uh, and some gems, some gem link changes, and more importantly, some aura changes. Uh, this map does have reduced AoE on it, so our RF is not going to be as girthy as, you know, it should be. So, yep. Because I know AoE was going to be one of the concerning things to talk about, but it's not that bad. You know, considering it's a reduced AoE red tier map, it's not that small, right? Kind of small, but not that small. I've been very happy with the build. Um, I don't really see any issues. The only thing is, and I anticipated this, um, uh, I anticipated this in uh, my build guides when I was first making them, is the damage is starting to fall off in red tier maps. But I mean, getting to red tier maps on a very small budget already is enough for me to farm currency for the build to push it further. So I don't really have an issue with it, right? RF is not really one of those glass cannon builds where you're downing, uh, you know, Elder Guardians on, like, a two exalt budget and insta-giving them, but you get insta give. It's more like a sustained build where when you get to the point where you can tank stuff, it's very comfy because you don't... You, you obviously still want to... You know, okay, that was not very comfy, though. What the fuck was that? Um, there gets to a point where you can pretty much tank majority of content, so you don't just get, like, insta give from a lot of content. Very comfy. V very comfy. <laughs> I don't know what that was, man. There are just some crazy mobs. Also, where are the bosses? Did I miss the bosses? Am I running canyon backwards? Oh, here they are. It's double boss canyon red tier? That's a little spook. No, I don't have a remove lead yet. Uh... No remove bleed and bad chaos res. Okay. Uh-oh, rooted, I can't move. Mm. Okay, juice it up. I think it's the aura stacking that really makes a big difference as well. I think maybe a little too extreme right now for pushing 100 stacks in this map. Usually I feel like I'm around like 120 to 150, but 150 is when it gets real spooked. Just because it's hard to identify what damage type I'm taking. Okay, I'm gonna wrangle and probably die. Okay, still okay. All right.
Okay. Gonna morph. Uh, currency. That's powerful crits. Okay. Quality gems. Oh, let's see what happens here. Chaos. Okay, chaos is bad. I think Roa Stampede is pretty bad on Metamorph, dude. Wait, where'd the guy go? Wait, what? Oh, he has the, has the charge from the chicken. Not the chicken, the dog. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's talk about some changes now. Let me just go vendor this stuff. Oh. Okay, so first up. Step one, I want to go ahead and bring the importance to the unique rings, which are here and here. Um, there's basically three unique rings that I would recommend for you guys to kind of take a look at. Um, so, the three unique rings would be Pyre Ring, which I did have in the video, which basically just rolls up to 80% burn damage. It's very good. You have Death's Rush, which has a really good source of Chaos Res armor, life, and basically permanent onslaught when mapping, which is very, very good. And then Profane Proxy, which is not super good, but because I'm Link Starved, Gem Starved, and all my gear is fucking corrupted, I don't really have the ability to just, like, put all the gems where I want. Also, when I'm trying to use a bunch of blues on pure armor gear, it can be a pain in the ass. I know about all the different methods with, like, you know, Del Socketing, the Verici method, the off-color... But, like, in the early league, you don't want to spend all this currency constantly chroming your gear when you just keep getting upgrades. This is why when a lot of people import my POB, they go, why do you have all this random stuff? So, with that being said, um, what Profane Proxy does is it allows you to use your chill skitterbot to apply a flammability aura. So, you get a shock multiplier skitterbot and you get a flam skitterbot. Now, this is not like an end game option. This is just something budget. This is a 2C ring. This is a 2C ring. This is a 2C ring. All very cheap. Uh, you do get a lot more damage running flammability because of the minus 46 fire res versus the 74% uh, uh, increased burn. So this is one nice option. Now, to run Skitterbots, this moves me to the next part of my auras. So originally, I did run Purity of Fire. Because of all the new sources of life regen in the game, Example, helmets can roll increased life regen, boots can roll increased life regen, gloves can even roll increased life regen. Um, do I have my secret pair of gloves here? Let's see. Gloves, as an example, I have a pair of gloves with 16% life regen, with 7% life regen, with 111 life roll. So purity of fire at this stage in the game is just giving us regeneration, and we're not really going to die to fire damage in maps with 85 fire res. If you are, you would have died to anything if it was, you know, cold or lightning, so that part is irrelevant. So I have opted to drop Purity of Fire or Skitterbots for the Shock Multiplier. Now, a lot of people ask, why not drop it for Malevolence? That's because Purity of Fire is 35, Malevolence is 50. Malevolence requires you to get an Enlighten, Enlighten is multiple exalts. So that's why I'm doing this. I have dropped Malevolence for Determination because Determination puts me from 8k armor to 22,000. 22,000 armor helps scale your Divine Shield. More importantly, it increases the bubble of Molten Shell. So without me hitting a Granite Flask, I have a 5.2k Molten Shell that is constantly refreshing, which is very, very convenient considering I have only 5,000 HP. I do have the ES buffer too, but this combo goes so well together. If I turn off the Termination, it goes from 5.2k to 2,000. So very big. Now... Um, the next aura is Purity of Elements. Has not been swapped. 
I, I refuse to remove this. A lot of players seem to be asking me why I run Purity of Elements. I do want to emphasize again the change to Purity of Elements. Not only does it give you elemental res, it makes you immune to Brittle, Sap, Scorch, Ignite, not Burn, Burn is RF, Ignite, Chill, Freeze, and Shock. Very good. Okay, weapon choice, Balefire. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my capture here and show you guys this program. It's called Awakened PoE Trade. Balefire is a one chaos item. I originally did not recommend this because I didn't really, I mean, just whatever. I mean, it's not like a big deal, but it does help with itemization when you don't have a six link scorching ray. So in this instance, Balefire is a two chaos item. You just get a level 25 scorching ray and I have infused channeling, which needs to be flipped. Oh shit. Infused channeling, control destruction and life tap. The reason I'm using Life Tap is if I don't use Life Tap, I go Oom um right now. Going Oom um means I do zero damage. Zero damage is not good. So Life Tap essentially allows me to use my life to cast Scorching Ray. In Min Max versions, I'd like to drop this for Inspiration. We're not Min Max right now, so just Life Tap, right? The reason why I like Inspiration though is Inspiration with Life Tap to cover some Min Max stuff. If you look at this, look how long it takes for me to generate life tap. So that was like a good second. That means I need to channel for one second to buff my RF because my RF is using life tap. See that, that channel? Now it's okay because you do want to sync it up with your infusion. Inspiration is much, much, much quicker. Example, I got a stack. So when you're running with RF and you're mapping, I'm at five stacks, right? You don't really have to, you just tap it. You like literally just nano tap and you get your inspiration. This is my preferred setup, but that's for later. I don't have the mono right now. Okay, moving on to the helmet. Why am I not running RF in my helmet? Because I need Essence of Deliri or Essence of Horror to craft on Elder Base Helmet, which is going to be a bit expensive. So right now I'm running Righteous Fire in my six link because I want to get currency to craft my helmet. For now, I'm just using an armor helm with life regeneration. Uh, the links in my helmet are Summon Skitterbot, Determination, Burn Damage, Vol RF. This is fluff. You don't need it. I'm basically just leveling them. Again, it's just kind of like fluff. It does help a bit, but it's not a super big deal right now. Ideally, I would like to get a 2120 Vol Righteous Fire. It's going to be expensive. You can only get it through Double Corrupting. Um, as for what's better, a 21 RF versus a 2020 Vol RF. I'm going to say the Vol RF is better if you spam it. If you don't like Vol RF because it's scary, use a regular Righteous Fire. Let's go over to the Shield. I'm running Wave of Conviction, Combustion, and Cast One Damage Taken. When mobs hit me, I shoot out a Wave of Conviction, which applies Fire Exposure. Scorching Ray applies Fire Exposure, but this instantly applies the Exposure. And even when I'm mapping, a mob hits me, it shoots a Wave of Conviction, it slaps 30 monsters. I now have minus res from, from this. Scorching Gray is more for applying exposure on boss fights. This Then it also rolls Combustion, which rolls a chance to um, minus their fire res on top of that. I'm using a Rise of the Phoenix for the maximum fire resist. Moving on to the chest piece. You can get this chest piece via Emperor of Purity. So Emperor of Purity, I'm going to bring up PoE trade here. Emperor of Purity should be a 2-3, two 2-Chaos two card. So seven okay don't you're not buying it for five mirrors i don't know why that's there so seven times two is 14. that means you can get a six link for 14 chaos from there i would recommend you use a uh chaos resistance essence to craft and then get a decent life roll and you're pretty much good to go now for my prefix i would like to get life gained as added es but i cannot do that right now because i need to get it unlocked with betrayal so i just have an armor chest at the moment amulet Amulet's pretty big. So I bought a marble amulet base for literally one or two chaos. The higher the item level, the better. From there, I used Essence of Anger, which gives percentage fire damage. So use Essence, hit fire damage, get a life roll, you're golden for now. Allocate Arsonist because it's cheap. It's a big damage increase. Remember, you want a marble base for the percent regen. Remember, the percent regen also affects your energy shield. So if you look here, my energy shield regen is matched with my ES, or with my life, sorry. So when I drop it, I go from 882 to 1100. Boots! Um, boots can roll percent increase life regeneration. 
I mean, my boots are kind of shit right now. I want much higher movement speed boots. So here I have uh, Enduring Cry, Increased Duration, Molten Shell, and Life Tap. Um, the only reason Life Tap is on here is because when my Wave of Conviction goes out and I go boom, I don't want to die because I can't recast Molten Shell or Enduring Cry. Not the best setup, but it's just what I've got right now. Now, I did buy a Replica Soul Tether for three Exalts. Um, I cannot tell you what is better between getting your Replica Soul Tether or getting your Helmet. Um, it's kind of a preference choice. This makes you much more tanky. It's kind of the entire reason why I play Inquisitor RF. So for me, this is my number one goal. This is like literally why I play Path of Exile right now. This is just such a cool and unique interaction for me. It makes it very fun, right? Super good piece. It splits the degen between your life and ES, thus drastically increasing your survivability. It's also really good in the league mechanic because you're getting swarmed, constantly getting hit. So now you're regening to both sides, right? Your life and your ES. Uh, my gloves are pretty crappy right now. Uh, I definitely have to replace them. Remember, you can get percent increased life regen on gloves. It's very big. So I'm just running Arcane Surge, Flame Dash, Purity of Elements, and Blood Rage. The reason why I'm using Blood Rage is I have an abundance of life regeneration. By using Blood Rage, I get three Frenzy Charges, which is cast speed and more uh, damage in general. The more damage from Frenzy Charges works for your Scorching Gray, and it works for your Righteous Fire. Don't forget, the cast speed does work for your uh, Scorching Ray as well. With a min-max setup, you can craft minimum Frenzy Charges on your accessories. We're not at that point in the game. Now, I think that has pretty much covered just about everything I could go over. Uh, we went over every piece of gear. Uh, my flasks are absolute shit right now. I just haven't really paid much love to them. Uh, I'm running Quicksilver for movement, Ruby Flask to mitigate RF damage, Granite to just give me armor, but I should probably switch this to a Basalt and Amethyst Flask because as of now, my Chaos Res is bad. I do probably want to replace my Granite with a Quartz Flask, or I might even replace my Life Flask because this doesn't really do much for me. Quartz just gives us phasing. That's pretty much about it. Uh, I have went and snagged a two-point jewel, uh, which is just this that I rolled in Harvest. It does give me a lot of damage. The fire damage multi and the fire damage is super big. And then Uber Lab is going to be our Righteous Providence. All right, that's pretty much about it. I think I've covered everything I can. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys are enjoying your League Start with Righteous Fire. If you did, feel free to hit that follow button follow button no feel free to hit that subscribe button on youtube there we go and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box take care thanks for watching everyone see you guys all tomorrow